Uh, Thomas Nagel. Thomas Nagel asks, is the TBS Power Cube still good? No, it was never good. They have it listed for 20 bucks on their site. <laughs> no. What is the TBS Power Cube? I'm going to guess that almost all of you don't remember it. The TBS Power Cube, I'm going to show it to you in just a second. TBS, I feel bad for TBS. TBS has tried so hard to push this hobby in a better direction than it wants to go. TBS has tried so hard to make products that are innovative, that are easier to use. And the FPV hobby consistently says, no, hit me harder, daddy. I don't want products that are easier to use because I want products that are all cross compatible. Sorry about that. Because the TBS products, they sort of move you over into TBS's ecosystem. TBS is trying to do something new. And so a lot of times the new stuff that they do, you had to just keep buying their stuff. And people didn't want to do that, I'm guessing. They just wanted the hard to use stuff that at least it's what everybody else had, I guess. So this is the TBS Power Cube. This is a stack. It is four ESCs, a video transmitter, and a flight controller. By the way, these, these ESCs are two-in-one ESCs, if I remember correctly. One, two. I don't know why each ESC seems to be two boards. Oh my God, each of these is a single ESC. Wow, I did not remember that. So here, is, is that right? It is. Here's one set of motors, here's the other. So this is one ESC on a board, one ESC on a board, a video transmitter. I think it's probably a, a, the equivalent to a Unify, I would guess, and a flight controller. And one of the things that they do that's clever is they actually pass the power up these nuts. These nuts. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. So these are live. One of these, two of them are power and two is ground. And uh, it's called the Power Cube. And like, first of all, the reason you shouldn't buy it is I'm 99% sure that it has, it's the Calibri F, is it an F3? I think it's an F3. I guess I should check that. Uh, yeah, no, so don't buy this. It's an F3 flight controller with, ooh, 25 amp ESCs, guys, 25 amp ESCs. There's no reason in today to buy an F3 flight controller. There, the Betaflight doesn't support it. Nothing, nothing will, you, you will not be able to update the firmware. You'll barely be able to configure the firmware. No one should buy this, even for $20, unless you want to put it on a shelf as a memory of things TBS tried to do to make the hobby better that we did not appreciate and did not buy from them. Yep. Yeah, don't, don't buy it. Don't put it on a quad. Uh, the real... Uh, a reason why this may not have been more popular is that like if you blew an ESC and had to change it, can you imagine how much work it was to take all these nuts off? Yikes. No. Uh, it's a clever idea and TBS probably lost a lot of money developing it and then when it didn't sell well. Uh, they put it in their bind and flies. Uh, some of their bind and flies. I forget which one. The Oblivion. Did the Oblivion have it? I don't remember. Uh, and, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they were a little resentful over there. Uh, I love TBS, but are they as a company not innovating enough anymore? Should they pick up on designing, producing HD0 VTXs? Uh, I would love it if they did that. Um, 
I think that TBS could make a good HD0 VTX. However, I don't... Yeah. The reason that I think TBS hasn't leaned hard into HD video transmitters yet is that to compete with DJI, I think that they would struggle to compete with DJI. And I don't mean that they would make a bad product. What I mean is that DJI, it, it, you, you have to sell a lot of products to make enough money to, uh, to make it profitable. DJI, so let's say that 50% of, F, of new FPV, of pilots buying new product by DJI. If you think that number is exaggerated, I, I, I think you're wrong. I think that may be a low number. But let's just say for the sake of this argument that 50% of new purchases of FPV gear is DJI video transmitters. Okay. And then some, some, the rest of it is split between Walksnail, HD0, and Analog. So now let's imagine that TBS starts producing a video transmitter, a digital video transmitter. Well, already they are only have access to half the market, and there's three other companies competing with them. That's uh, for a small company like HD0 to come out of nowhere. With like, you know, three employees. I don't know how many employees HD0 has. I know that Carl is not the only employee. They have engineers working for them. They have manufacturing facilities. Uh, but HD0 is a small company coming kind of out of nowhere and trying to carve out a niche. And they can afford to try to get by on very little sales for a while. Eventually, maybe maybe they will not be able to survive that way anymore. But TBS is an established larger company. And as companies get larger, it's harder for them to take risks because they need enough revenue to support their existing business. And so would, would TBS make an HD, would TBS make their own digital video transmitter? That seems like it would be like, look at what Walksnail has gone through. And Walksnail basically just made a second version of DJI's video transmitter with similar hardware and similar. I mean, they, they it's not a clone and it's not a copy, but it's, you know, I don't know if it, TBS would go that direction, especially given how many things TBS has tried to do in the past, like this power cube and just like eh, didn't really take off. Who knows why? So if I'm sitting over there as TBS, I'm like, great, I'm going to invest a shitload of money in a digital video transmitter that then maybe it'll succeed and maybe it won't. Um, I mean, that's why I'm not over there actually innovating. I'm just sitting here talking on the live stream. I don't think TBS would make an HD0 one either. I'm not sure how many third parties are going to make HD0 video transmitters. I feel like the, that... I mean, they have open sourced some of this stuff. Maybe someone could, but right now HD zero is selling direct. And I don't know that the HD zero is unable to fulfill. Let me ask you this. Is HD zero making as many video transmitters as the market wants to buy? Well, let's look. Let's, let's not do in stock only. Let's look at all of these stores around the world and search for the HD0 Freestyle 1 Watt. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have put the word freestyle in there because it's giving me too many search results. HD0, how about we just search for it? No, because then it'll just put VTX. The store search results are sometimes... Should I put it in quote? Oh, I should put it in quote. Hang on. Hang on. Put it in quotes. HD0 VTX. Let's see how well that, well that works.
Okay. So HD0 Whoop VTX in stock. HD0 Whoop Light Bundle in stock. Let me search for the word VTX. HD0 Freestyle in stock. HD0 Race in stock. HD0 Freestyle in stock. In stock. In stock. In stock. Out of stock at Unmanned Tech. So Unmanned Tech has some VTXs out of stock. Freestyle out of stock. Unmanned Tech not doing so good with stocking the VTXs. And that's it. Nobody else has them. So at least in the United States, they're all in stock. And I bet if we go to the HD0 website, we would see the same. Products. Uh, shop. That's what I want. HD0 new product, VRX VTX. In stock, in stock, in stock, in stock, in stock. So see what I'm getting at. They're all, AC0 is already making more video transmitters than the market wants to buy. So what's the motivation for a TBS or a Foxier to make more? Don't see it. All right. Well, anyway, that's my prognox prognostication about the future. And like all future prognostication, it will turn out to be wrong. But makes for good live stream content, doesn't it? Um, License to Drive wants to know, how many years in the quad world does an electronic part typically become ancient museum worthy? In the quad world, three years. Uh, at some point, TBS analog VTXs won't sell that much anymore. Yep. Uh, at some point, TBS will either get out of the VTX market or, come, or, or make a digital video transmitter one way or the other. 